Why do we worship? 1st Chronicles 16.23 Sing to the Lord, all the earth. Proclaim His salvation day after day. Declare His glory among the nations, His marvelous deeds among all people. For great is the Lord, and most worthy of His praise. He is to be feared above all gods. For all the gods of the nations are idols. Worship the Lord in the splendor of His holiness. Tremble before Him, all the earth. So why do we worship? We worship to place adoration on who God is in our lives. He is love. He is peace. He is joy. He is the reason that we worship. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. Let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise for our baptismal candidate this morning. We thank God for our baptismal candidate. We want to continue to have our minds stayed on the one who woke us up this morning. We want to continue to praise him now and worship him in spirit and in truth. For the word of God says that they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. For he seeks such to worship him in spirit and in truth. Amen? Amen. Let us stand for our responsive reading. Our responsive reading is found on the inside cover of our bulletin and is coming from the book of Proverbs, Proverbs the 22nd chapter, the 4th through the 7th verse. And once the church has found our responsive reading, then let the church say, thank you, Jesus. Amen. And the word reads, 
by humility and the fear of the Lord are riches and honor and life. Train up a child in the way he should go. And when he is old, he will not depart from it. Altogether, the rich ruler over the poor and the borrower is servant to the lender. Our hymn of praise this morning, an old familiar tune, Blessed Assurance. Let's stand and sing it with a cheerful voice and a joyful noise unto the Lord. Blessed Assurance.
Lord. You know, I was looking at uh, TV the other day, and I heard a statement, and I thought about the statement, and I said, wow, that's a profound statement. The, the gentleman said, you know, we have people in Washington, D.C., rich people that are making decisions for poor people. And I thought about that, but I thought about this also. As Christians, we can't put our trust in man. We have to put our trust in the Lord. That way, we can never go wrong. It'll work every time if we just put our trust in the Lord. Yeah. This morning, I'm going to read to you the 34th number of Psalms, verses 1 through 3. And it reads as follows. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make her boast in the Lord, that almost shall hear thereof and be glad. O oh, magnify the Lord with me, and let us exalt his name together. Thank you, dear Lord. May we pray. Father in heaven, once again, here we are gather together your people who are called by your name, touching and agreeing, thanking you once again for allowing us to come before your throne of grace. And Lord, we're just thanking you this morning that you have given us eyes to see your splendor, your magnificent earth that you have given us. Lord, we thank you for giving us ears to hear your word that we may be able to do the right thing in your eyesight oh, yeah. and Lord we just thank you that you're giving us a mouth to spread your word throughout the land that people may hear who you are and how great is your name we thank you this morning Lord we thank you for allowing us this day one more day to get it right that we might be able to glorify and magnify your holy name. We need you this day, Lord, and we can't get along without you. You are God of all gods, Lord of lords, and King of kings. And for that, we say thank you, dear Lord. Dear Lord, we just ask you to continue to bless this Black Chapel family as a whole. Continue that we may be able to be the people that you are calling us out to be. Lord, just ask you to bless our pastor to continue to give him wisdom, knowledge, and understanding that he may lead your people in the way that you would have him to, Lord. We thank you, O oh Lord, for all things, Lord. We just thank you for just allowing us to wake up this morning and start out on a brand new day. We couldn't do it without you, Lord. You are the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. And without you, there's nothing in between. Lord, we just thank you for just another day of hope. Hope in you, Lord. Hope that we will do the right thing. Hope that the world will do the right thing. Hope that our legislators will do the right thing. Hope that our policemen will do the right things. Hope that our world as a whole will look to the hills which come at their help. And we know that all our help comes from you, dear Lord. Thank you, O oh Lord, for just allowing us this day to come before your throne of grace. And Lord, we just ask you to bless those that are bereaved this morning. Bless those that are in the hospitals. Bless those that just don't know you, Lord. And Lord, may they look up to you and say, what must I do to be saved? And you will give them the answer, Lord. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. 
We love you this morning, Lord. And we can't tell you enough, Lord, how much we love you. And we need you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray and forever give thanks. Amen.
church on Sunday, but we're supposed to praise the Lord through everything that we do. That's how we show that we're grateful for all that he's done for us, for all that he's provided for us. And we've come to this point in service where there's another opportunity to show how grateful we are to God. You know, I'm sitting next to my good friend, Brother Ross, today, and I'm reminded of how he always tells us that we bring our tithes and offerings to the storehouse. We don't pay anything. We're bringing this back to the Lord because the Lord is the one that blessed us with all of this, whatever it is that we have. So at this time, just want to remind you that here at Black Chapel, we have multiple ways to give. You can give through the Give La Fly app. Uh, you can uh, go on Facebook and click on the link uh, and give that way. You can come by any time of week, uh, drop it off in our drop box, or you can pay right here in church. So just want to remind everyone of that. And at this time, we're going to put you in the hands of our ushers. stand. I'm already standing. <laughs> Please stand. Right now we let us fix our heart and mind on the one who woke us up this morning. Uh, the one who gave us his only begotten son. Uh, gracious God, our father in heaven, yes. hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Lord, we just pause in for a moment to give you thanks, thanking you for all things that you have done for us. You might, you've been mighty good to us in spite of ourselves. We want to ask you right now to forgive us of our inconsistencies with you. 
And we just want to thank you and praise your holy name. We ask now that our worship and praise be acceptable in thy sight. For you said, come into your house and make a joyful noise. And we just want to thank you right now. Uh, this is our uh, time that we just spend a little bit more time with you to give you thanks for this offering that we just received. Now, oh God, we pray that it be used for the purpose in which you intended it to. We also want to take this opportunity, O oh God, to pray for the family of Mother Barbara Taylor, the lovely mother who you allowed to be with us for a period of time. We thank you for Sister Jessie Bell Williams, Mother of Brother Curtis Watson, O oh God, and we thank you and pray for Sister Teresa Henderson. We just ask that your will be done in these, uh, our friends and loved ones' lives, and we thank you for all that's represented here today, all families represented here today. And we just ask you to continue to bless us and keep us, O oh God, for we know that it's only about your grace and your mercy that we are standing in here today. We know that there's no shot, no mask, no social distancing can keep us. We know that you is the one that's keeping us. And we want to thank you right now. We want to thank you right now. That you've been keeping us in spite of ourselves. We thank you for the ones who are here. We thank you for the ones who are not here. We pray for the ones who despitefully use us, for you ask us to do that. We talked about the kind of love that you have for all of us and that agape love that you love us in spite of ourselves. And we need to learn how to love one another right now in spite of ourselves. We thank you for uh, our pastor and his family. We just pray that you continue to lead and guide him in the ways you would have him to lead and guide us. In the mighty and powerful name of Jesus, we sincere pray this prayer and do give thanks. Let us all say amen. amen. All things. Oh, Now we'll have a selection from our choir. Deacon Brown. Deacon Brown.
Amen. 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 The word of God tells us that the joy of the Lord is our strength. It has allowed us to come out here again to worship him in spirit and in truth. It's the joy of the Lord that has allowed us to be here. Amen. 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 We just thank God for our choir. Sometimes I hear that choir saying, every time I don't see the director, I say, oh, joy, 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 joy. You know, I love to see that, and uh, it's a good thing, you know. And uh, God is so good, and uh, he just uh, He loves us so that he just gives us the desires of our heart when we delight ourselves in him. Isn't that right? Isn't that right? Y'all know that, don't you? He give, he's the one that gives us the desires of our heart when we delight ourselves in him. So the joy of the Lord is our strength. Amen. We've come to that portion of our service now where we by, uh, acknowledge our visitors. If you're not on Black's Chapel's role at this time, we'd like for you to stand that we might be able to acknowledge you. You don't have to say anything if you don't want to. We just want to acknowledge that God has allowed you to come out and worship him with us now in spirit and in truth. Amen. All our visitors, please stand. And also, if you're visiting with us on the World Wide Web, we take this opportunity to thank you for tuning in to the Black Chapel Missionary Baptist Church uh, worship service. We're pastored here by our own pastor, Reverend John O. McNeil, and our first lady, Sister Gwendolyn McNeil. We just thank you all for joining in with us now. If we don't have any visitors here physically with us, we may have someone visiting with us now by the World Wide Web. So let's go ahead and sing our song, We Love You With the Love of the Lord. Amen. 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 All our visitors, we love you with the love of the Lord. Sister Veranda Love will be coming with the announcements, followed by a selection from our choir, and then we'll prepare our hearts to receive the word of God from our pastor. I love you. again, Black's Chapel. Our announcements are printed, and I'll call your attention to, to our announcements. Okay. The women choir rehearsal will be Wednesday instead of Thursday of this week, Wednesday, August 25th at 6 o'clock. So invite your other ladies in the church that you don't see around. Let them know it will be Wednesday on the 25th at 6 o'clock. Women rehearsal for the fifth Sunday. Amen. We also remind you about Girl Scouts. So if you have anyone ages 5 to 18, we would love to have them as part of our Girl Scouts. We do have applications here today. And our youth usher board is looking for young, young boys and girls to serve on our usher board. It will be for second Sundays. So they won't conflict with them singing in the choir. Second Sundays, they will serve. We also have an announcement about free groceries. Tuesday and Thursday on, from 9 to 11, also the second Saturday of every month, and the address is printed, 806 North Ferris Street, and they have a number in here if you want to call. It's frozen and dry goods. Amen. Free tutoring. We know our children have been virtual all last year, in and out of school, so we have free tutoring offered to us for reading assistance, Monday through Friday, 3.30 to 5.30 p.m., that's on Fair Street as well. And there's a number to call to sign up your students. So please take advantage of that opportunity. Amen. On our prayer list, as mentioned, we have Sister Mother Barbara Taylor, family, and her demise. Sister Jessie Bell Williams, mother of Brother Curtis Watson. And Sister Teresa Henderson had surgery. And the funeral services for Mother Taylor will be here on Saturday, August 28th at 11 a.m. The interment will be in Rolling Fork, Mississippi. There will be no viewing or repass. The combined choirs are asked to render the music, and all other auxiliaries are asked to be in place. The choir members are asked to wear white for the women and black suits and black ties for the men. Again, that's for Mother Barbara Taylor. Amen. Our birthdays for the week. On Tuesday, on Tuesday, well, today is Caleb Thomas's birthday, Caleb Thomas. 
On Tuesday, we have Destiny Rattler and Denebra Bell and Jerry Henderson. That's on Tuesday, the 24th. The 25th, we have Sister Michaela Henderson, Houston, Michaela Houston. On the 27th, we have Sister Barbara Washington and Brother Marvell Hicks. On the 28th, we have Sister Selena Clay. And wedding anniversary on next Sunday will be Donnell and Deborah Bell. Amen. Happy anniversary and happy birthday, members. Announcements for the week. Have a great week.
Hallelujah. What a foundation that our God has provided us with. A foundation in which we can rest all of our trust on with that blessed assurance in knowing that it is going to hold. No matter how often we rest on it, nor how much weight we place on it, it is going to hold. A foundation that has been tested and proven for over 2,000 years, and it is still standing, still there waiting on those who have not as of yet invested their trust in it and placed themselves on it. Because any other place or any other foundation that you place your trust in or you try standing on is going to be proven to be nothing more than sinking sand. It will not hold you because it was not divinely designed to work such a work. If God had of, it would have. But God did not. Only Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man shall see the Father but by way of me. And the Father is still God. And not only is he still God, but he is still an able God. A God who is able to do all things but fail. There is victory in Jesus. The way that God has divinely designed to lead and guide us to the Father. Take your burdens to the Lord. And leave them there. And see what in his own time and in his own way. He will indeed 
work it out. What an awesome, mighty, available God we serve. Let's give this great choir a round of applause. For blessing our souls and our spirits through song. You know, the Lord God left no I undotted nor T uncrossed. He thought way ahead of those of the past. These are the present and those who are to come in the future. God always stays out front in every way, shape, form, and fashion in which we need him to be out front leading and guiding us in the ways in which he will have for us to go. And there's no greater way than a way that has been tested and proven by God. And that is what his way has to offer unto whosoever will. Let him or her come. A way that has been tested and proven to be the right way, a way that's going to bless us with the will of God, with the will of God. That is what God's way blesses us with. That is what we receive when we go God's way, the will of God and everything about God is either good or very good even the things in which he made (laughs) what a God we serve and I encourage those who may not have have of yet invested your trust in him Let it be known that the gospel is still the power of God unto salvation. Unto those who believe. Believe. And all over this world, seven days a week, 24 hours a day, the gospel of Jesus Christ being preached and taught which proves that it is still not our Father's will that any should perish, but that all. He said, before he come, this gospel was to be preached in the four corners of the earth, all over the world. And that work is being done right now. Right now. What a merciful God we serve. I would like to call your attention this morning to the book of Proverbs. The third chapter of that book. The Bible tells us that if all the works and all the miracles of God, if our God has worked, were recorded in books, then this earth could not contain them. There would not be enough space on earth to contain all the great works and the miracles in which our God has already worked and performed. And I remember one of the conversations that Jesus had with one of the mother twos when they questioned and doubted his deity. And Jesus said, well, if you can't believe me, the words that I speak, then believe me for my work's sake. Just look at what I've done. 
if we can't trust God for his word's sake, then just think about all the great works in which he has already done. More, so many that the earth could not contain them written down in books. Proverbs 3 and 5. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not unto thine own understanding what a word what an invitation that humanity that has been extended unto humanity every man woman and child walks upon the face of the earth has an open invitation that goes out as long as the blood is still running warm in your veins. Trust in the Lord with all thy heart and lean not unto thy own understanding. So let us think on this thought. <clears throat> the God that we trust. The God that we trust. First of all, Black's Chapel, this God that we trust is omnipresent. Meaning that he is in all places. At the same time, when Jesus told us that I will never leave you, nor forsake you, but that I will be with you always, those were not just words being spoken, but it was a truth being spoken because Jesus was the word made flesh God made flesh and the world among us I will never leave you nor forsake you but I will be with you always even unto the end of days this God that we serve is omnipresent, meaning that he is in all places at the same time. And that is what David meant in the 139th number of songs. When David stated, whether can I go from his spirit? Whether can I flee? from his presence if I ascend all the way up into heaven thou art there if I make my bed all the way down in hell thou art there and if I take wings in the early morning and fly off into the othermost parts of the sea even there even there, thy hand is there to hold me. And thy right hand is there to guide me. Just because I'm David. Yeah. 
just because of who I am and whose I am. The God that we serve is omnipresent. All those benefits came unto David just because of who he was and whose he was. He was a man after God's very own heart. And since our God is omnipresent, that means that he never moves. You know how we often just out of habit, come Lord, come Lord. I need you right now, Lord. This God that we serve is omnipresent, meaning that he, he, he's in all places at the same time, which means that he never moves. He never come and he never go because he's always there. He's before time, he's in time, he's after time, and he's always right on time because he is indeed an on-time God because he's omnipresent in all places at the same time. And when God plays a call upon our lives, and God has sent that call out over all humanity. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy late, and I'll give you rest. When God plays a call upon our lives, not only does he call us into salvation, not only does he call us to serve, and not only does he call us to worship and to praise God, but he also calls us into warfare. That's what Paul meant in Ephesians 6 when Paul say we wrestle not against flesh and blood but against spiritual wickedness in high places. Not only does he call us into salvation, not only does he call us to serve, not only does he call us to worship and to praise his holy name, but when he calls us, he also calls us into warfare. And, 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 and when your name, when your name is placed on God's called list, not calling list, but when your name is placed on God's called list, meaning you had the call and you answered the call, as soon as your name is placed on God's called list, you become a number one target on the enemy's list. I say as soon as your name is placed on God's called list, you become a number one target on the enemy's list. And the enemy is like a pirate but on dry land. And a pirate never ever attacks an empty vessel while it is headed out to see but he lay and he waits until it is full of goods full of cargo full of treasure and then he launches his attack well the enemy's attack upon you is nothing more than an indication of the cargo in which you're carrying the enemy it, it is nothing more than an indication of the cargo in which you can meaning that the more the more you have to deal with the enemy the more valuable you are to God and the more valuable you are to God the more you're going to have to contend with the enemy I say again the more valuable you are to God the more you're going to have to contend with the enemy and I know we have some witnesses out there I know we have some witnesses out there I know we have some out there who've already been battle tested and battle proven have already been everything but dead meaning you already been through the fire and you've been through the flood and the reason why you made it through the fire and the reason why you made it through the flood is because you have been washed in his blood you have been washed in his blood and when you're washed in his blood you undergo a spiritual blood transfusion and when you undergo that spiritual blood transfusion God grants you a lifetime warranty a lifetime gift guarantee which reads that if anything should ever go wrong with you along the way if anything should ever go wrong with you along the way you can bring you back to the manufacturer and get you fixed and get you fixed do you know when you've been washed in the blood of the Lord do you know that when you undergo that spiritual blood transfusion that God gives you a lifetime warranty God gives you a lifetime
lifetime guarantee which reads that if anything go wrong with you in your life you can bring you back to the manufacturer and get you fixed and get you fixed get you fixed and there are also some witnesses out there there's some witnesses out there who are experiencing some malfunctions who are experiencing some breakdowns and may even need an entire overhaul job done on you because the reason is because you 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 instead of investing your life in Jesus you invested you in human experts in human experts like in doctors or lawyers or counselors or law enforcement now all all of those entities plays a very important role in our society. All of those entities plays a very important role in our livelihood. But they should never, ever be placed before God. Never, ever come before God. Because there will come a time when your doctor will need a doctor. When your lawyer will need a lawyer. When your counselor will need a counselor. When the police will need a police. Because all of them are fallible. That's why Solomon tells us in our scripture reading trust in the Lord with all your heart lean not towards your own understanding but in all thy ways acknowledge him and he shall direct thy path he shall direct thy path and there's a cloud of witnesses black chapel who's gone on ahead of us in glory who have left their testimony in stone who has left their testimony in blood who have left their testimonies in scriptures there's the three Hebrew boys there's more Moses, there's Joshua and there's David who left their testimony declaring that when the Lord is directing your path, when the Lord is directing your path, fire won't burn you, water won't drown you, walls won't block you, and giants can't stop you. When the Lord is directing your path, when the Lord is directing your path, water can't drown you, walls can't block you, giants can't stop you, fire can't burn you. When the Lord is directing your path and black chapel every Sunday morning I come out here to get me some guidance. Every Sunday morning I come out here to get me some direction. Every Sunday morning I come out here to get me some enlightenment. Every Sunday morning I come out here to get me some encouragement. Every Sunday morning I come out here to get empowered. Meaning every Sunday morning I come out here to worship and praise God because when my praises go up spiritual enlightenment comes down when my praises go up spiritual empowerment comes down when my praises go up spiritual encouragement comes down I come out here to praise God every Sunday morning every Sunday morning I come out here to worship and praise God because when my praises go up my God comes down and where the spirit of the Lord is there's liberty there's liberty there's liberty there's liberty but let me tell you something you can't praise God just in no kind of way and expect him to come down you see in order for God to come down you have to be praiseworthy you have to be praiseworthy you see David tells us that our God dwell in the habitat of our praise and the word also tells us that our God doesn't dwell in an unclean place in an unclean praise so in order for that quality of praise to go up you have to present yourself before the Lord praiseworthy praiseworthy and we're not praiseworthy because we've been so good we're not praiseworthy because we've been so careful but we're praiseworthy because of what God did for us through Christ on Calvary and on Calvary God so loved the world until he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him shall not perish but you have everlasting life we're praiseworthy because he was wounded for our transgression bruised for our iniquity and the chastisement of our peace rested upon his shoulders and by his stripes by his stripes we are made praiseworthy we are made praiseworthy we are praiseworthy because we've been washed in the blood of Jesus I say again we are praiseworthy because we've been washed in the blood of Jesus and the blood of Jesus has not lost his power has not lost his power we're praiseworthy because we've been washed in the blood of Jesus we're praiseworthy because we have undergone a spiritual blood transfusion a spiritual 
blood transfusion and his blood has not lost his power has not lost his power i wonder this morning black shepherd do we have any witnesses out there who know beyond the shadow of any doubt that his blood has not lost his power beyond the shadow of doubt that you've been washed in the blood of jesus that you've undergone your spiritual blood transfusion now you know what black shepherd i love the way mother nature explains the transformation of that blood transfusion nobody can explain it not express it the way mother nature does through the transformation of a tadpole oh you know what a tadpole is don't you i love the way mother nature explains and express that transformation that, that blood transfusion that we have to go through in order to send praises up and present ourselves praiseworthy to god through the transformation of a tadpole Oh, you know what a tadpole is, don't you? A tadpole is that little black watery creature that swims around the edge of the pond. And the tadpole spends his entire tadpole life around the edge of the pond, in the mud, in the slime, in the filth, and in the stake, and in stagnant water. Until one day, one day, Mother Nature whispered into the tadpole's spirit, telling that tadpole, oh, Mr. Tadpole, don't you know, you don't have to stay out there around the edge of the porn. You don't have to stay out there in the mud, the slime, the filth and the stink. You don't have to stay out there in stagnant water. Don't you know you have within your capacity the ability to become something wonderful, something beautiful, something blessed and highly favored. And after being ministered to by Mother Nature, that tadpole will swim out to the middle of that pond, die down to the bottom of that pond, cover itself up with mud, and remain down there until the undergoing stage of metamorphosis. Remain down there until he's changed from that of a tadpole to that of a bullfrog. Until he's changed from that of a tadpole to that of a new creature. And the first thing that new creature will do, he will swim to the surface of that pond. He will swim to the edge of that pond. He will hop out of the mud, hop out of the filth, hop out of the stink, hop out of that stagnant water, hop out among the grass and the flowers and the trees. And late round that midnight hour, he will hop up on an old hollow log and croak songs of praise to God all night long. All all night long, send a man, send a woman, send a child. Don't you know you don't have to stay out there in that old stagnant world, in the slime and the filth and in the sin. You don't have to stay out there in sin. Don't you know you have within your capacity the ability to become something wonderful, something beautiful, something blessed and highly favored. And you don't have to go down to the pond and cover yourself up in mud. All you have to do is go down on your bending knees and tell the Lord, Lord, I'm tired. I'm tired of being out there in the mud. I'm tired of being out there in the slime. I'm tired of being out there in the sin. I don't want to be a sinner no more. I don't want to be a sinner no more. I trust you, God. Here's my hands. Here's my mind. Here's my soul. Here's my spirit. Take me, make me, mold me, fold me, fashion me into what you have me to be. And if you find anything there that shouldn't be, wash me, wash me, wash me until I'm whiter than snow. I trust you, God. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not towards your own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall. And they direct their paths, and their paths have been charted and tested by God to be the right path. And you can never go wrong going right with God. Never go wrong. Regardless of how dark of a path righteousness may lead you. No matter how challenging of a path righteousness may lead you. You can never go wrong going right with God. The door of the church is open. Trust him. Trust him. The greatest compliment, the greatest reverence, the greatest honor that one can render unto God is to trust him. Trust him. Trust him. The day you hear my voice, Harden not thy heart. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man will trust me enough to come to the door, open up the door, and allow me interest, I 
I will prove myself unto him. I mean, I'll sup with you. I'll be right there at your side. No matter what your meal of the day may be, whether it's sugar and spice and everything nice, or whether it's hell here on earth, I sup with you. And where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. There is liberty. Liberty is in this place this morning because the Spirit of the Lord is in this place. And where the Spirit of the Lord is, there's healing, there's deliverance, there's peace, there's joy, there's happiness. There is human and spiritual fulfillment because this God we serve leaves no eye undotted nor T uncrossed. He works both ends and the middle. He is the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and everything in between. You'll find the presence of God. The door of the church is open. By way of a letter, Christian experience, a candidate for baptism. This invitation is not just extended to the congregation, the sitting congregation. But for all of those who hear my voice, our virtual audience, this invitation is also extended to you. As I say before, I say again, if you desire to become a full-pledged member of the Black Shepherd Missionary Baptist Church family, all you got to do is just text in the comments your name and your telephone number, and I will personally get in touch with you and receive you into this family. The door of the church is open. By way of a letter, Christian experience, or candidate for baptism, the door of the church is open. The door of the church is open. What an awesome, mighty, present, and available God we serve. A right now God, an instamatic God, a God who doesn't have to be wind up nor tuned up, nor waited on. A God who always stands willing, ready, and able to do business with you right now. Right where you are. You don't have to get prepped up and put it up and beautified to do business with God. He said, if you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart the Lord Jesus and that God raised him from the dead. If you come to me with a repentant heart in spirit and in truth. I will receive you unto myself. Oh, yes. What a God. Yes, Lord. What a God that stands before our presence right now with outstretched hands, saying, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden. And I will give. It's not just, it's just not something we can earn. We can't get that good, nor that careful, not that it, nor that able. To earn that in which God gives us. That is why he has to give it to us. Yes, yes. Because it's priceless. Yes, it is. There's no possession that we could ever possess, possess that can purchase the wealth of God, the Amen. virtues of God, Amen. the mercy and the grace and the love of God. The door of the church is open. By way of letter, Christian experience, or candidate for baptism. The door of the church is open. What an awesome, mighty, long suffering, omnipresent, available God. Yes, Lord. We serve. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. We thank God this morning. We thank God. We thank God for all of you. I sit in audience and I view an audience. And I say unto our viewing audience, you are very important to this ministry. 
Because God placed you here. And God never, ever error. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not toward your own. And any time you lead away from God, you're leading toward someone else's understanding. Anytime there's not good enough reason to lean away from God. Such has not been made nor created that will be accepted by God. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not toward your own understanding. But in all thy ways, acknowledge him. God has a place for you. He has a meeting place for you. He has an expectation of you. And he expects to meet you. Meet you in his house. His expectation is not to come to your house. He's already come to our house when he came down here on earth. And he has built houses all over this world. Has made it so available. Well, you don't have to get on a camel and travel for months to worship, weeks to praise. All you have to do is get out there and get in that $50,000 automobile that's full of gas, brand new set of tires, low mileage that God has already provided you with. And go his way. God has blessed you with everything that you need. To keep, maintain, and to sustain you. And if you can't trust God. Where else is there to go? There's no hiding place. There is no hiding place. When God will you to be at a certain place, God has covered the territory that lies between where you are and where he will you to be. And it is clear. If he can't pave the way, how can you? How can you pave your way? How can you defend yourself? Not, I'm not going to go as far as saying against the unseen. But even against the seen. There's only one safe place. And that is in the Lord. And whenever you go his way. He's with you. We thank God once again for all that he has allowed to be said and done throughout the activity of our worship service. I have an announcement where it reads that Sister Blue, Sister Val Blue granddaughter passed on last week. You know, when we, when we speak about the will of God and the ways of God and where we are right now in the season we're in and how we're responding toward this season and what I mentioned earlier about there's no hiding place. If God can't keep you, you can't be kept. I'm reminded of Egypt. When God sent the deaf angel 
to travel all the streets and out in all the fields and plains of Egypt. And his mission was a single mission. And that was to kill the firstborn male of every family and of every beast in the field. It didn't matter how fortified your fortress may have been. King Pharaoh proved that. Locked up behind all kinds of walls and barriers and armed guard, security. But when the will of God passed through, there was no hiding place for man nor beast of the field. God is passing through. And there's nowhere to run. And there's nowhere to hide. The only place that you can run and hide and be secure is in the will of God. Yes, sir. And every firstborn male, both man of man and beast, who was not in the will of God, perished. Now you can you can you can define that any kind of way you want to. But it's part of the history of God in his dealings with his people. And according to scripture, he's the same God. He changes not yesterday. And we support, we even teach this today. That we're supposed to learn from our history. If not, we will soon repeat it. And there's nothing new under the heavens. This is not the first time this has passed this way. And, but we should be a wiser people. And a more trustworthy people. Than any behind us. Because we stand on the shoulders of all of those in whom have gone before us. And the word of God. And yet, Pharaoh is trying to protect his child, himself, from the will of God. And it can't be done. There's only but one secure place to run to, and that is unto the Lord. And he is showing us physical evidence of that every day. By the thousands and hundreds of thousands every day. I want Sister Blue to know that our hearts and our prayers goes out with her and her family. I'm a grandparent. I don't know, but I can imagine. And just my imagination is there are some places that you can't even stand for your imagination to carry you. And that place where she is now is one of those places. Sister Blue, we love you and we thank God for you. Whatever service we can be toward you and your family, you know where we are. We love you and we thank God for you. And our prayers will continue to go out in behalf of your family and to the Taylor family. Another jewel taken out of the crown here at Black's Chapel. Mother Taylor 
was a fair flower indeed. A woman who was always on her post. And when we speak in on behalf of not quitting your post until you're properly relieved by your commanding officer, she exemplified that soldier that walked her post in a military manner, observing all things both near and far. And as soon as she retired from her post, God had another one for her on the mother's board. Faith for Ursha. Years and years and years. Always on time, always in place. And when you look at her, not one strand of hair out of place. When I say in place, <laughs> I don't just mean in church. <laughs> when you look at her, everything. Mo McGee, in place. She represented the Lord well. One who managed that in which he gave her stewardship over until death did her part. And I just want the Taylor family to know that Black's Chapel, we loved and we will always love your mother. And she bared two beautiful, wonderful children. And we thank God for you all. She taught you well. She trained you well. And both of you have grown into some great human beings. And may you continue to walk the way that you know she willed you to walk. And that is alongside the Lord. Her service will be held here Saturday at 11 o'clock. Those of you who can and will, please, ma'am, please, sir. And if by chance you can't, just... Keep the Taylor family lifted up in your prayers. If there's nothing more, Deacon Brown. Yes, thank you, God. <clears throat> By way of Deacon Anderson <clears throat> and our guardian angel in Edwards, who are, who's always looking out for Black Chapel. Amen. 24 dozen of eggs. You know, I remember one of Sister Manning's sayings. When she said, here at Black Chapel, there's two things always going on. One is somebody's getting married or someone is having a baby. Now it's almost, it, it, another third is something that's always being given away. <laughs> and and that's, a, that's a blessed threesome right there. That's a blessed, so Sister Manning, add that to your list. Next time you make an announcement in heaven, you announce that. There's always three great things going on at Black Chapel. Either one is having a baby, getting married, or they're giving away something. <laughs> Amen. If there's nothing more, <clears throat> let us please stand for our closing song and benediction. <clears throat> the benediction, I would just like to introduce everyone to our latest member, Sister Rochelle Page. Will you just wave your hand, Sister Page? United with us on yes, last week and was baptized this morning. We're so blessed and so grateful to have her as a part of our family. Now, until we meet again, may the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God, that sweet communion with the Holy Spirit, rest, rule, and abide from henceforth and forevermore. Let us all say together. Bless.
bless you. God bless you. God bless you. You're dismissed. God bless you.